G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for the last football come down of season 2024. Sorry, it's a day late. Someone, not me, someone, uh, decided that he would let his hair down after grand final day and have one million beers and spent the entire Sunday unable to get out of bed because he's over 30 now. It wasn't me, somebody else. So forgive me, this one's a little bit late, um, but I'm kind of glad. I, I already did a grand final reaction um, immediately after the game, and this show is really about uh, chatting with you guys and your comments on this particular grand final. It's been a fantastic year on this show, to be honest, and uh, it's really added a different layer of you know my relationship with the audience and you guys and hearing different perspectives. It makes me better at what I do as well. So we got like 110 comments or something like this on this particular one, so I had to be selective if I included all of the comments. It would start to get a little repetitive, so I've had to be a bit more selective this week. But um, let's get straight into it on um, the Brisbane Lions becoming AFL Premiers. So GBags98 with the first one says, Sydney are too reliant on stars such as Heaney or Warner bailing them out. And Ashcroft's composure and class on the big stage shows that he could be a star of the competition for the next decade alongside the likes of Dacos and Reed. Yeah, absolutely. I think you probably put Sheasel in that conversation as well. Just these kids that are coming out of the draft these days. They're just, oh, some of the prospects, the top end prospects seem better than ever. Um, is that recency bias? Probably. But Ashcroft doing what he did um, is just unbelievable. The guy's just made to play on grand final day, like a lot of those guys that you've mentioned there. Well, we suspect we've only seen Dacos and Ashcroft in a grand final, but you get my point. Yeah, interesting one here with Sydney and the way that they probably, they are relying a little bit on Heaney and Warner and, and Gould and, um, but you know, you'd imagine that when they're, they're the, by far and away the best players in, in the same way that, you know, West Coast in 06 were probably over alliance on Judd Cousins, Kerr and Cox. Warner actually didn't have too bad a game. Um, and Heaney, oh, I can't remember how many he got. I think they got a goal each, but yeah, nowhere near being in the best five or even possibly 10 players on the field. It was interesting. I just had a look at the stats of this game. I didn't analyze it too deep at the time because it's just grand final day and you're more interested in the narrative, but Interestingly, like Brisbane go into this game as the better contested team um, and, you know, clearance contested possessions. Those are the ways that Brisbane, they track really highly in those stats, but that is not where they won this game. The contested ball was virtually even. I think Brisbane were plus two and Sydney actually had an extra clearance, possibly helped by the fact that McInerney was out because um, they won the hit outs considerably. So they had an extra clearance, but it was the outside game, uncontested footy, the sheer amount of uncontested marks Brisbane were able to accumulate and just tear Sydney apart um, but that was really how they won this game and Sydney's lack of defensive pressure would be certainly one element of it I mean they'd lay just 45 tackles but they still got the ball inside 50 only two on two less occasions than Brisbane which did not reflect the feel of the game their ball use inside 50 was also quite poor I think Brisbane's was 58 percent efficiency inside 50 and Sydney's was 31 and, and they got smashed in marks inside 50 so probably getting a little bit off what your original comment was but that was just an interesting breakdown of this game um, Brisbane won with their uncontested footy and honestly just what untouchable in that second quarter that became the premiership quarter this year uh, fantastic effort AFL snap says Katy Perry was elite and Pickle Green Guy says, adding CGI to pre-game entertainment was a terrible idea. It takes away from the atmosphere and doesn't even look good. Okay, first of all, I will agree. Katy Perry was awesome. My, um, I'm not a Katy Perry fan by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I seem to remember previous ones other than Robbie as um, Grand Final Entertainment. It was just kind of like, you couldn't really get a feel for the atmosphere. Whereas this one and Robbie... Um, as soon as I turned it on, my earliest memories of this grand final will be me like with one eye open, turning on the football and just seeing Katy Perry do her thing. I was like, wow, she's actually doing, that's actually a really good pregame show. As for the CGI, I didn't notice it take away from the atmosphere. It did look kind of weird. It probably didn't need to be done, um, but I wasn't necessarily against it. Max Hansen, since 1995, 13 teams have lost a grand final by 40 points or more. Zero of those 13 teams have won a final the following year, with six of the teams not even qualifying for finals at all. Can the Swans break 30 years by next September of history and win a final in 2025? Congratulations to the Lions with incredible resilience throughout the entire season. Yeah, we got plenty on the Lions coming up, but that, yeah, that, that stat is very interesting. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, there have been teams that come back from... Terrible grand finals, uh, I think in my own club in 15, you know, we, we came back and even when things got bad at the start of the 18 grand final, they were able to come back. So it wouldn't rule them out. I, I guess with Sydney, it's just the body of work now. There's, there's two out of three recent grand finals where that's happened. So interesting stats though, Max, you're really coming through with the stats lately. Mando, 
One, what the hell was BT's announcement? Some people are saying it was Joe, some people are saying it's not. Two, Zorko may retire. Him holding up the cup at the end might be a sign of that. Three, the non-Victorian grand final actually has a really good vibe and atmosphere. P.S. Eric hitting the American... Uh, sorry, the Ackermanis Selly was peak. Why did I read that as American? Agreed. So first of all, BT's announcement. I don't know. He backtracked on that so hard when he was asked about it publicly. I don't know if that meant that he really didn't mean anything by it. It's unclear. A lot of people put two and two together because Mitch Cleary was the one that, uh, that said that about Joe Danaher weighing up his future. Maybe it was just a massive retraction and maybe maybe Danaher was considering retirement, but because it sort of leaked, you know, he decided not to announce it now. I, I, I don't know. Really don't know. It's weird. As for Zorko, I think... I read that Fagan had pretty much promised Zorko he would always be there when they lifted the cup when he handed over the captaincy. So I don't know if that's based on that. I mean, Zorko doesn't seem like he needs to retire. He might want to go out on a high. He could also understand if he thought Brisbane would be back there again soon. So maybe he wants to win another one. Who knows? But he is pretty old. As for vibe and atmosphere, yeah, it was unreal. It was just like every other grand final, really. And 100,012 people went and uh, agreed. The Ackermanis... Um, celebration was awesome. I loved that from Hipwood. It's nice that, you know, Hipwood, I don't know if you grew up a Brisbane fan, but it's sort of nice to see like a little bit of a nod to previous legends of the Brisbane Lions. And to think that he did that instinctually because he would have known he was going to kick a sick goal. Um, loved that. It was great. I do remember Ackermanis doing that at um, Geelong. So yeah, that's how old I am. Sean Christie says, what a result makes 2015 feel a little bit better. <laughs> Does it? I don't know. 2018 was probably what made me feel better about 15, but I, I get your point. It's certainly a pretty common thing now with teams getting slaughtered in grand finals. It's happened a lot in the last 10 years. How is the debate about coach of the year going now? Good call. Yeah, Fagan won it, didn't he? Um, well, that just validates everything. I wonder if Cox is available to coach West Coast now. Well, you posted this before McQualter got uh, signed as the Eagles coach, which by the time you're watching this, I should have a video on True Eagle, my Eagles fan channel, reacting to that. Stephen Boland says, is father son really good for the competition? Good question. Comes in light of Will Ashcroft, um, you know, doing his thing and, and Dacos being as good as he is. Is it good for the competition? No, it's not. If you're talking purely from an equality and fairness of competition standpoint, um, but it is a tradition that I do like. And um, But it's also true that it's not good for equality. It doesn't uphold fairness by any stretch of the imagination. Am I against it? Probably not yet. Um, you know, just because a, a son is born of a gun father, I mean... Is Nick and Will, are they both better than their dads already? Just about, you know. I don't really remember Marcus Ashcroft as a player. And, and Peter Dacos was, you know, a gun. But, like, Nick is possibly going to win multiple brand lows in his career. So, interesting. Marvel Man says, Brisbane are always a top four team, but the only reason they won it from fifth was because they couldn't kick straight in the GWS and Collingwood games at the end of the season. Sure, you could also just point to their terrible start to the year. You know, it feels like a lifetime ago people were talking about that off-season trip and the turmoil they were in in two and five. You know, that probably cost them top four as well. But agreed on the ability that they showed. You know, I think that was reflected in my power rankings this year. I thought, yeah, Brisbane. Brisbane are up there. Razorblade says, a fifth place Brisbane Lions really sums up how hectic a season we've had. A well-deserved win by the boys could go for another three-peat, especially with another Ashcroft coming in next year. Yeah, I mean, there's been previous times where I think, yeah, this, this Premier is well-suited to go back-to-back, -back, but it is pretty rare. Not extremely rare, but quite rare. Um, and it would be an amazing achievement if they got back there. On list talent, yes, but so much more than list talent goes into a Premiership, doesn't it? So I wouldn't bet on it, but I do agree that Brisbane's window, like it could just perpetually stay open for another five to 10 years. But we've been wrong about teams and that before. Spin Doctor says, you know you're getting old when the AFL players look like children to you. Will Ashcroft looks like he could be handing out a premiership medal and getting the souvenir cap at the end of the game, but instead he is winning the Norm Smith. That's true. Some of these kids are just built different, man. He paid 23 to one on sports bet. I had a sneaky few dollars on. I would say they should clone him, but no need. He has a younger brother in the same mold. Yeah. I really hope that Levi's not as good as Will, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, their, their junior career is, is very similar, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, Brisbane are very lucky. Jack says, Kai Lohman is shaping up to be a super scary forward. He's got some of the worst goal celebrations I've ever seen, but plays consistently well and does good under pressure. Yeah, I, I feel like 12 months ago, there was talk about Victorian clubs sort of sniffing around Kai Lohman, like he's not getting an opportunity, should we go for him? And... He's decided to stay loyal, and wow, that paid off for Brisbane. 
Um, good player, good player. As for the celebration, I don't know if I've really noticed them, but he did kick a goal late. Well, he kicked four, but I think was it his last one where he points down to his ankle. I kind of thought, you know, he's pointing to the part of the ankle that ball came off because he nearly shanked that completely. Leo King has a good comment. Josh Dunkley and Brandon Stasevich are unsung heroes for Brisbane, and they put Papley and Heaney in their back pockets. That's a great point. Uh, both, well, Stasevich I've been a fan of for a while, really good defensive player. And Dunkley, you know, he's pretty consistently good. So agreed, you know, putting those guys somewhat out of the contest would have gone a long way to winning this game. But as Lachlan Mackay says, Brisbane weren't at their best all season until this game. Yeah, I think I think there was a patch where they were really good, you know, middle to end of the season. However, I would probably agree that this is one of those occasions where the Premier has saved their best for last what are some other examples of that? I mean, Melbourne in 21 were good all year, but probably still hit their peak in the grand final. Maybe Geelong in 22 as well. You're thinking of the one-sided ones. Richmond against Adelaide. I mean, they pumped Geelong in the first final, but I think that performance on grand final day might have been their best. In the close ones, you know, West Coast, Collingwood, Collingwood and Brisbane, not necessarily the best games or performances we've seen from those teams. But it is hard to equate home and away games with grand final day. But I agree generally that Brisbane probably, they, they were just top tier in that second quarter in particular. So I would, I would agree that that was their best performance of the year. Miss Ant says, the Lions have often reminded me of Port in the past and struck me as a team that couldn't be trusted in finals. But this year shows superb mental resilience and growth. To lose the grand final last year, lose key players to injury in this season and be 0-3, then have all those comeback finals wins and get the flag is remarkable. Should be a doco because that is a season for the ages. I think you nailed it. I don't think I need to add anything to that. Like the injuries they sustained early in this season as well, like Kitty Coleman in the opening round after being their best player on grand final day last year, let alone all the other ones. So much adversity. Agreed. It's 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 a great story, this Brisbane Lions premiership. Clarkie says, Loman, Archie, and Ashcroft proudly own Sydney. Well said. They all played really well. Archie, again, um, I think... I, I don't really remember specifics, but I feel like he didn't have the best 23 grand final. So to come out in 24 and do that, um, it helps when your teammates are playing well, but he had a good final series in general. Jared Gibbs, really good win by the Lions, was really impressed by Oscar McInerney and his reaction. No pity for himself, just pure joy and excitement for his teammates, pure class. Yeah, absolutely. You have to feel for Oscar McInerney. There are stories of, of this every season of, of players being unlucky. And, um, you know, his demeanor, there was absolutely no selfish thoughts of himself uh, in that moment. He, he seemed as excited by anyone. And um, it would require a big, a lot of strength, rather, um, to, to be able to do that. But it, it, it appeared like it came so naturally to him. And you know what, why, why wouldn't it? You know, he's been there for the entire journey. Um, does it really diminish him uh, or his legacy that he wasn't playing on grand final day? Um, there's no reason he can't enjoy it as though he's been part of it. And he, and he was, really. He won't have the experience of playing on grand final day in a win, at least not right now. <laughs> Who knows about next year? But it's not like he's not part of it, you know? So good for him. But I agree, very classy. An appropriate handle. The Lions have been really patient and improved little by little each year. Clearly a very mature organization to not just sack Fagan after a few finals losses. Yep, yep. I think this is another... Mm, is the word cautionary tale? Maybe not, but it shows what's possible by showing faith in a coach. Um, you know, there was a little bit of pressure on Scott um, for many years of making prelims until they finally won one, and now he's validated as one of the best coaches. Um, Fag Fagan also already has that rep, but you also look at someone like, well, there's Longmire here with Sydney and Hinkley, admittedly putting in some pretty bad finals performances to different extents. However, I am one to err on the side of caution with a coach that you believe is the right man and not simply turfing a coach because the finals performances aren't up to scratch. And I do think, I don't recall a, a senior coach getting sacked in a year where they've played finals. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I just don't remember it. I mean, Malthouse stood down, really. I don't know if that one counts. Jaden. Brisbane have finished top six for the past six years. Fagan deserves this. What a coach, what a team. Agreed. Um, Fagan looks like such a little sweetheart. Um, not to be patronizing to him, but he does. You know, you just look at him and you go, oh, you deserve this. He seems like such a nice fella. Charles Atkinson. As a Lions fan born just after the three-peat, this is the culmination in the last 10 plus years. I grew up not knowing what finals were like and go to see firsthand how Fagan helped the club turn around. One hell of a rebuild. All the pain and finals losses in the last few years were worth it. Getting to go and watch it live as well was just spectacular. Congratulations, mate. It must be the best feeling. You look at the, oh, you know, historically, Brisbane, 
well, they're now with four premierships uh, in the AFL era. Um, that's as many as anyone's won, I think. Hawthorne's won four. Geelong's won four. West Coast have won four. So yeah, Brisbane's in that same category. Am I missing anyone there? Probably am. Anyway, um, but what that doesn't tell you is everything they had to go through in between the last premiership and this one, the 21 years, specifically really from 2013. When did, I don't know, forget the details of when Brisbane really sunk. To come back from where they did, in the position they were even when Fagan took over and his first couple of years there, it's a remarkable story and congrats. Shand says, Lions finally played through the middle for one and a half games after Omak went down and been dominant. Keep playing like that and a dynasty is on with the youth coming through. Yeah, again, I, I see the argument for Brisbane's window staying open for a while. I mean, Will Ashcroft, Levi Ashcroft, Jasper Fletcher, Kai Lohman. They'll have to keep adding to it and be creative. And it will hurt, you know, when they lose Neil, Andrews, and to some extent Zorko as well. But, you know, there's no real reason to think they're going anywhere. Mason Barker says, The most baffling part is that this premiership team literally gets better next year. Coleman, Doday, Mark, uh, McCarthy, Gardner back from injury, Levi Ashcroft and Sam Marshall through the draft. Is there a potential dynasty? Yeah, again, so uh, continuing on the same themes. The youth coming in is good, but that is only one element to you know creating a dynasty. Honestly, it's going to be the mentality part that is going to be the hardest for Brisbane. That being said, you know, I don't think they're a mentally weak team, that's for sure. Neil Pemberton, last year's grand final was the most painful match I can recall watching. There were so many mistakes from the Lions, yet we only lost by four points to the Pies, whose goal kicking was not great. That's true, there was a lot more Scott shots on goal when they're from Collingwood. As you do, I had to believe these guys would be motivated by that awful outcome, but I was not confident going into finals. I thought winning four on the bounce was nearly impossible. I'm still taking this in. The best part is learning from the interviews how much last year lit a fire in the belly for the whole team. A year of pain has been lifted. Rota Wash says, initial thoughts, let's go. <laughs> Up Lions says, well done, boys. Hope you party like crazy. Yeah, I mean, losing a grand final can have so many different impacts. And sometimes, you know, players are motivated by that. Um, but sometimes it doesn't happen the next year, you know. There's been a few examples where teams lose a grand final and then take a couple of years to get back there. So Brisbane doing it the year after, uh, it's pretty uncommon, I would have thought. Hawthorne lost a grand final in 12 and then one in 13. And off the top of my head, I'm struggling to remember any other Premier that lost a grand final the year before. But yeah, as we talked about the resilience piece with Brisbane, even as recently as round seven of this year, the mental fortitude to come back and play their best football and be the best team in September, um, That's it's been fantastic. Got a few focused on Sydney now. Uh, Maestro, Maestro, Sydney aren't big enough, strong enough, or tough enough to win a flag with their current list and coaches. To perform like that in a grand final was very disappointing. I don't think, you know, I, I think to, to do it again after 22, I do think that, you know, Brisbane probably played to a gear that Sydney couldn't have matched, but, you know, even at half time, the game was still, you know, 44 points or whatever, 46 points. Yeah, it's mostly dead and buried, mostly. But we've seen in this final series, Brisbane come back from 44 points down against uh, GWS, wasn't it? Things are possible. And um, uh, even just like reading the intensity of Sydney in that third term, it just wasn't wasn't where it needed to be. Hilsey says, Longmire should do the right thing and resign. Four losing grand finals, time to give someone else a chance. I mean, it's possible. It's possible. I mean, again, it really comes down to considering Longmire's not super young, right? Is a fresh start with a group needs. I'm not a huge fan of, of sacking coaches or, um, you know, forcing them to resign or whatever on the basis of, you know, grand final results or finals results. But there is just an alarming trend here with Sydney. There's no doubt about it. And they'll need to really uncover what is going on mentally. But I mean, do they hire someone to help with, you know, mindfulness. I, I say that because West Coast did that after 15, um, going into 2018. And Will Schofield specifically talks about how, you know, they, they were able to be a lot more present and in the moment on the 2018 grand final. So does Sydney need to think outside the box to do that? I think we discussed this a little bit with Port Adelaide and their performances in finals after the qualifying final this year. Maybe that's all it takes, but yeah, Longmire has been a, a sensational coach. So some dude says, yes, yeah, Sydney has some huge problems with nerve in the grand finals. I suspect Longmire overthinks finals instead of just sticking to the basics. While the true dimensions of the MCG aren't as big as people think compared to the SCG, clearly Swans still have some problems with playing there, especially since they hadn't played there for six months. Overall, a really disappointing final, and now with the trauma that has carried for a few finals, it will probably become generational trauma for the Swans. We might see many more of these in the future. I think it's it's still unclear to me, though, how much to blame Longmire for that performance, because I think, I think showing up on grand final day, I feel like the coach has done a lot of the work already. 
does that make sense? You know, it's not match day innovation. It's not, you know, Longmire's temperament and mindset on that particular day. A lot of this is a well-oiled machine by grand final day. It's the players probably just getting beaten and not quite being up to it. Um, so then you think, is it a motivational thing? You'd hope the players don't need too much of a pregame rev up from Longmire, right? So I guess, you know, throughout this video, I've probably changed my own mind. I'm starting to think uh, maybe, maybe the blame goes on the playing group and they need a mental shift. JNG says, we have the Collie Wobbles now, the Sydney Shambles. Four grand final defeats in 11 years with an average losing margin of 56. That is shameful. Challenge Edition says, John Longmire has a serious problem. Davey Grimmett, the Swans are woeful. No idea how they went into the game as favorites. There's definitely a big gap between when Sydney was at their best form this year. We, they obviously dipped. And when they came back, they were pretty good without being at that same level. So I don't know if teams got to work on the way the city plays. Sometimes that can happen. Do they show their cards too early by playing too well too early? Uh, probably not. It's probably more of a mental application thing in this game. They did also win two finals. So we're really talking about grand final day performance. That being said, I did also tip Brisbane. So when you say you're not sure how they went in uh, as favorites, I suppose I agree. Play on footy says, Swan seemed uptight all week, Rampy especially. Neil held the cup longer than Rampy. Harris Andrews won the toss. The footy gods just wanted the Lions to win more. The Lions simply dominated. Having played at the MCG last week certainly helped them also. Yeah, possibly. That, that could be a factor as well. Sydney, as somebody said, I don't think they'd played there since April 28th when they beat Hawthorne. So that will probably have worked in Brisbane's favor. And I did, I did notice as well the body language. Um, again, I, I, I don't know how much to read into it. Obviously, it ended up being true, but that's maybe correlation and not causation. But I thought, you know, the, the body language of Neil versus Rampy, I at least noticed it. And then sure enough, the game played like that. But I just thought, you know, Neil looked happy and relaxed, um, you know, during the grand final parade, which again, I don't want to be a nuffy and, and read into that too much, but there might have been something there. Jared Gibbs, I think this game will have damaged the Swans so much they won't mentally recover in this generation of players. Getting smashed in two grand finals in a row will have them fearing another. They may play finals in the next little while, but I'm not sure they can get there again due to not wanting the same result. Again, you think back to teams who get belted in grand finals. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they fall away. I think this Sydney group's too talented to not play finals next year, you know, unless there's something horrendous going on. We saw in 22, they fell down, but I think injury and, you know, the average fitness of each player was probably a bit down in 23. Then you also see Heaney become what he has this year and Chad Warner probably also elevating another level. I, I guess I can't answer that. I understand though that, that argument um, and I don't recall too many teams getting destroyed in multiple grand finals. That's, that's what's different here with Sydney. You know, we've seen uh, I, I used the West Coast example, got sh sh shellacked in 15 and came back and won one, although it took a couple of years in the middle there. You think of Adelaide in 17, for a variety of reasons, perhaps not football related, they fell away. They also lost some players that year. But I don't recall a team getting slaughtered in two grand finals. And it was only 10 goals, but you do feel that it was, it got out to 75 nearly and could have easily gone over 100 at that point. Sydney clawed some goals back, you know, long range goals from Parker and Warner when the, the intensity was gone. Um, but I feel like, you know, if percentage had been on the line, this would have been over 100 points. AFL Legend says, as a Swans fan in grand finals, we just keep mentally getting destroyed. We've proven physically and mentally we can get through the challenges in the home and away season, as well as the first two finals, but the scars unfortunately remained on the biggest day of all. Yeah, it's an odd one. I mean, the Sydney started well as well. You know, it wasn't necessarily that they got jumped early and thought, shit, we can't settle. I suppose it's true of, you know, my team in 15 as well. We keep the first goal and then just got swarmed. It's really hard to analyze from the outside looking in. I think clearly there's a mental issue with them showing up in these games, um, grand final specifically. Yeah, it's, it's as well, as a fan who's, who's kind of seen it all with my football team, I think back to, you know, we've lost a close grand final since I've been watching. We've lost... Uh, you know, grand finals of a one-sided. That was, like I said, 15. I think you, you really contrast the two different experiences. I think there's, there's a lot less heartbreak when your team gets annihilated. There's still some heartbreak, but I feel like it's also tinged with anger. Um, you know, there's an anger that your team hasn't showed up. So I do feel... You know, I do feel some sympathy for Sydney fans who've had to do it two out of the last three years. I have faith that they'll come back, but like I said, we're kind of in new territory. We're seeing a, a great team get slaughtered in two grand finals. Maybe they come back. Maybe they prove to be a bit of a Brisbane type who can overcome this adversity. We'll see. They're, they're a great organization. I expect them to be back, but um, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's a wrap on season 2024 and the football come down. Naturally, I'm not going anywhere. Still making content. Just this specific show will be parked until... 
next season. So thank you so much for your contributions. Uh, it's really added a new layer to this channel this year and your support's been fantastic. So congratulations, Brisbane. Commiserations, Sydney fans. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.